the demand for safe mass transport is perhaps one of the biggest challenges facing government authorities in transitioning from the so-called community quarantine to the new normal. This and what should be new norms of conduct and social practices are the focus of this week's Motoring Forum. Social or physical distancing is among the main keys to minimizing, if not completely stopping, the spread of COVID-19 that has infected more than 3 million and killed close to 250,000 people. How to maintain physical distancing in the various modes of mass land transportation in the Philippine setting, from trains, buses, shuttles, vans, jeepneys, to tricycles, is the main challenge of authorities. Virtually, all forms of mass public land transportation were banned under the Enhanced Community Quarantine, or ECQ, declared in Luzon and in other regions, province, and cities that were hit by the pandemic. After weeks of imposing severe shelter-at-home restrictions, government has moved to wean some communities out of ECQ and into what is called the General Community Quarantine, or GCQ. At present, we have seen how GCQ guidelines are working, or not, in meeting the demands of transport for people. Under GCQ, the DOTR is allowing various modes of land transportation to operate under guidelines meant to meet physical distancing standards, as well as the pandemic health safety measures recommended by the World Health Organization and the Department of Health to minimize the spread of the virus. Before the GCQ was implemented in identified areas, authorities disseminated guidelines aimed at reducing contact, transmission, and spread of the virus in public transport through the mandatory use of face masks and gloves for drivers and constant and thorough disinfection of vehicles and terminals. Authorities have reaped some criticism for how they responded to the challenges of mitigating effects of the pandemic, but many believe the GCQ guidelines for public transport could only work as planned if transport operators and drivers themselves, as well as commuters, understand the need for complying with the new normal for commuting, that these guidelines are for everyone's protection and benefit. However, some say that aside from the safety aspect of the guidelines, thought should also be given to how the guidelines affect the earning capacity of transport operators and drivers. They are, in effect, forced to take only half of their usual fare per trip. Already, a jeepney transport group is suggesting that the boundary drivers pay should also be halved. Others believe that drivers and operators should comply with the guidelines wholeheartedly if they are assured of steady and adequate income. Commuters also must understand the need of maintaining a social or physical distancing while waiting for rides. How to go about this will be a challenge both for the commuters and authorities tasked to enforce the guidelines. Many expect discipline to come only when commuters are assured that there are enough affordable transport to go around and that they don't have to wait long to get their ride. People tired of being cooped up in their homes or raring to get back to the proper workplace are certainly hoping the ECQ is succeeding in flattening the curve and the GCQ is helping communities transition back to normal life or as close to normal life before the pandemic. Safe mass transport norms and practices after the government imposed community quarantine are featured this week on Morning Today's Motoring Forum, brought to you by Suzuki Philippines.